When we think about making a game, we get all kinds of ideas for mechanics, story elements and systems. It can be hard to know which features we should prioritise, and if we're not careful, we can fall victim to scope creep, the endless addition of new features. But what can we do to avoid this? In this video, I'll show you how to manage your game ideas and limit the scope of your game using something called the Moscow Method. Let's get started. Now, before you buy a plane ticket, the Moscow Method isn't named after the city. It's actually an acronym, MSCW, standing for must have, should have, could have, and won't have. When we think of new ideas or features, we put them in one of these categories. First, the must have category highlights the features that absolutely have to be in the game. We can think of the essential features of the genre and platform we're working on, as well as the features we expect from games in general. For example, if we make an RPG, we must have a leveling system. If we make a game for Xbox, we must have control support. And if we make any game that we play for more than one session, we must have a safe system. If any of the features in the must have category are missing, what we make can't be considered as a game, even if we finish all the features in the other categories. You can add side quests, skill perks, and crafting to Skyrim, but if we can't move our character, attack enemies, or pause the game, can we really call it an RPG game? Next, the should have category represents the features that are not 100% necessary to the game, but add huge value to the player when we include them. It can be quite easy to get must have and should have confused, so here's how you can differentiate the two. Must haves make the game playable. Should haves make the game fun. A Fallout game must have a combat system, but it should have VATs. A Call of Duty game must have competitive multiplayer, but it should have classes and perks. Since the should-haves are adding considerable value to the game, this should be worked on immediately after relevant must-haves have been completed. This brings us to the could-haves. These are the ideas and features that are nice to have, but don't add much value to the game on their own. Things like customization, side quests, and unlockables. As game designers, we come up with new ideas all the time, and we have to make sure we're working on the most valuable features first if we ever want to release the game. If you find yourself saying, wouldn't it be cool if then that's an idea that should go in the could-have category. Once the should-haves are finished, you can start working on the could-haves. Don't just start working on them as soon as you have the idea, or you'll end up losing focus. The final category is won't-have. This represents the features that your game won't have when you release it. If your game is a single-player experience, then you won't have multiplayer. If your game won't be on mobile or tablet, then it won't have touch controls. It may seem pointless to add the features your game won't have, but this gives you a fast no to any new idea you come up with. If it's on the list, we don't do it and we can focus our energy on a new idea. When we combine these four categories, it gives us a simple framework for prioritizing new ideas and game features. The must-haves keep us focused on the fundamentals of our game that we may take for granted or ignore. The should-haves highlight our core gameplay elements that drive the fun in our game. The could-haves allow us to keep track of and prioritize new ideas as we come up with them. And the won't-haves help us to prevent scope creep as the game expands and takes form. And that's the Moscow method. Let me know in the comments if you used it before. As always, if you found this helpful, check out the other videos on screen, Leave a like and subscribe for more.